Well, happy Thanksgiving, everybody. I wanted to say that today. I know tomorrow's Thanksgiving, but uh, I know many of you will be really busy tomorrow and may not get to listen to a devotion. And I hope you do. I'm going to be quick tomorrow, but I hope you and your family have a great, great time together. And, and take some time to reflect on the blessings of God and give thanks to Him uh, as you gather with your family tomorrow. Honor, find a way to honor, honor Jesus on your Thanksgiving uh, holiday. Well, today we start the Gospel of Matthew, and we will be reading Matthew up through Christmas and the end of the year. And uh, I quite often like to end our annual reading plan uh, with one of the Gospels, so we're reading about Jesus during the Christmas season. Um, each of the four Gospels begin with a different focus on Jesus. Uh, Mark begins with Jesus' baptism in the Jordan River, and then it's the shortest Gospel and filled with a lot of action, fewer words but more deeds by Jesus. John begins with Jesus' deity, that he's the eternal one. Remember, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God and the Word, etc. So he starts with, with Jesus' preexistence. Jesus before Bethlehem. Um, uh, Luke focuses on Mary's experience and the relationship between Jesus and John the Baptist. Matthew begins, uh, his focus is on the forgotten person of the Christmas story, Joseph, Mary's husband, the man who raised Jesus. And Matthew begins with, G with, with Joseph's genealogy, which goes all the way back to Abraham, the father of the Jewish people, Jacob, uh, King David, right on down to Joseph. Um, and um, he focuses on the fact that Joseph was a godly man, a good man, a righteous man, that, um, that he was a good husband, he was a good father, um, he, he, he focuses on how Joseph reacted to the news that his fiancée, Mary, was pregnant. And by the way, in their culture, uh, if you were engaged, you were considered legally married, even though you had not consummated the marriage. Those were two different things. But it took a divorce to end an engagement, just like it took a divorce to end uh, a marriage. So, it was a, so engagement then was a much more serious thing than it is in our culture. Um, Matthew tells us that Joseph was a good dad. Later in Matthew, in chapter 13, we learned that he and Mary had other children. He had at least four other sons. They're named in Matthew 13 and an unknown, an unlisted or unknown number of daughters together. Uh, that's alluded to in Matthew 13 as well as, well, as well as other places. Um, and I referred to Joseph as kind of the forgotten character of the Christmas story. But I think he was a special guy. I really do. Wasn't famous. No great accomplishment the way the world thinks about great accomplishments. An ordinary man. Had a job. We're told he was a carpenter. He was known in his community. You read, you read that in the Gospels. Isn't he the son of uh, Joseph the carpenter? We all know him, his family. So he was known. He had a family, as I mentioned. And he loved his God, loved his wife, and loved his kids. I love the way Joseph is described in verse 19 of chapter 1, and that's what I want you to look at. Chapter 1, verse 19. And Joseph, her husband. Now, they were engaged, espoused to be married, not legally. They, hadn't, they had not consummated the marriage. They had not had the formal wedding, but they were engaged. So, as I said, that was a legal thing that took a divorce to end. So when you were engaged or espoused to one another in their culture, you were considered husband and wife. You just had not consummated the marriage at a formal wedding yet and then being together uh, physically. And so verse 19, Joseph, her husband, being a righteous man. I love that. And you, you see it in the way he responded he didn't worry about the gossip because everybody would have thought, well, uh, Joseph and Mary, they slept together before they were legally married. In their culture, that would have been a big taboo. Uh, Mary cheated on him, and he's still going to marry her? There was all kinds of gossip, and he took it. Did not allow it to corrupt him. He cared about her. And he protected Jesus when they moved to Egypt, 
when Herod was trying to kill Jesus and killed all those babies instead. He's a good man, a righteous man, a righteous man. He, he was an ordinary man who was a righteous, good, godly, loving, strong man. And what I wrote about in my journal was, if, if God evaluated me, could he say that? If God evaluated you, could he say that? Could he say you're a righteous, you're a righteous man, you're a righteous woman, and you are strong in your righteousness and in your faith, in your character, and you do what's right and what's good no matter what others think or say? Do you have a spiritual strength and, 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 and emotional stability about you? Uh, Joseph, he did. And I, I, pray, I prayed that God would make me obedient to him and his will and his ways, just like Joseph was. And maybe tomorrow when your family gathers around the table for Thanksgiving and you're eating the turkey and the dressing and the sweet potatoes and the pumpkin pie and everything else, and by the way, I don't understand people who fix mac and cheese for Thanksgiving. Eh, don't do that. Anyway, now I'm going to get messages from all you who love mac and cheese at Thanksgiving. But when you're sitting around the table and enjoying your Thanksgiving dinner, how, how about take a moment and share with each, each other what you really respect and appreciate about the others at your table. And then maybe take a moment and say, you know, I'm really grateful that Jesus did this for me this past year. I hope you have a great Thanksgiving, and I'll see you tomorrow with a real quick devotion to get you started for the day. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.